Greetings everyone. As always, I would like to start with a brief disclaimer. These videos are meant to help people learn physics. At times, it's meant to provide helpful hints. And at other times, it's meant to take you through the entire problem with hopefully what is a decent explanation so you can solve many others on your own. I try my best not to show the entire answer in any one screen so that the video remains about learning how to solve the problem and is not something simple that can be used as a shortcut to cheat or get ahead. If you're putting up with the sound of my voice, clearly you must want to learn this material. Okay, let's get started. So this problem is about two billiard balls um, hitting one another and some information is provided. Also um, whether the collision is elastic or inelastic that is discussed here. Do not assume, do not assume the collision is elastic. Uh, it's not clear if they want this instruction applied only to the first part or the second part but let's just assume they want an inelastic collision for uh, both A and B. Um, the nature of elastic collisions is uh, kinetic energy and momentum are both preserved and with inelastic I believe only momentum is preserved. Uh, you cannot count on the energy of the system being preserved and uh, conserved uh, at least not in a measurable way. The universe conserves it it's just that we don't have the tools I imagine to get the right numbers for it exactly. So here we go. Um, first let's draw a diagram. So that would be a good place to start. So you have a billiards ball that's okay so right we're drawing the diagram and uh, ball one has a mass of 0 0.400 kilograms. It moves and it strikes ball two which has a mass of 0 0.5 Five zero zero kilograms, and then it says that ball B is at rest, and after the collision, ball A is deflected off at an angle. So here we see, here's the ground, and we can just split it into components. So we have a thirty degrees component, and at a thirty degrees component, the ball, the velocity is given to us, velocity of ball A is 1.10 meters per second and it's after the collision which is why I imagine they added a little take on it so you could have velocity of ball A before the collision and then velocity of ball A with a little take after the collision. So every time you have a vector problem immediately you want to at least get its x and y coordinates resolved right so we can say that the final velocity final velocity of uh, ball 1 or A however in the y direction is basically so Sokatoa if you're familiar with this mnemonic um, so sine of opposite over hypotenuse cosine of adjacent over hypotenuse tangent of opposite over adjacent so that's it so for velocity in the y direction it's opposite so sine of opposite over hypotenuse and then that means sine times hypotenuse is the opposite side so basically if you just write let's, let's expand this a little I don't have enough space sine of 30 that's the angle multiplied by the velocity 1.10 that would be our final velocity of ball 1 or ball A in the y direction. What is the final velocity of uh, ball A in the x direction you ask? Again, uh, co cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. That means cosine multiplied by hypotenuse gives you the adjacent. So we just take cosine of 30 times 1.10. So we have that, right? Um, what else do we know? We know that conservation of momentum is dimensional. So if you want to write a conservation of momentum equation here uh, to try and see how much you know, and I'm not really trying to solve anything, I'm just trying to see what do I know, how much I know, and then 
at the end we're going to look at what we have at hand and say can we solve it or not so this is a collision problem so momentum of course is involved somewhere so momentum of the initial momentum of ball one plus the initial momentum of ball two must equal the final momentum of each one now they don't stick together so they're independent of each other we know that because they said ball A went in that direction, so clearly they did not stick together. And here we have it. And uh, we can again write another equation like this. Initial velocity of uh, ball 1 in Y. Actually, I didn't write the coordinates. Plus initial velocity of ball 2 in Y is equal to same deal the final velocity, uh, sorry, not the velocity, I've been saying velocity, the initial momentum equals final momentum in x, uh, initial momentum equals final momentum in the y dimension. Done, right. And linear momentum is easy, it's just mass times velocity. So if you start working on the x-axis, you have 0 0.4 or something, I'm not going to write all the significant figures right now, plus I hope you're familiar with what significant figures are. Now, this was simple because initial velocity of the ball was given to us to be 1.8 meters per second and times the ball of mass A. Uh, ball B was not moving, so its initial velocity is zero. Eventually it will move, So, but we do know the x direction velocity, that's the component that, sorry, not that one, this one, that's the component we took out already so I'll just put down the number for that it would be the velocity times the mass the mass hasn't changed it's still 0 0.4 times cosine 30 times 1.10 plus so that's a number that's easy uh, final velocity sorry let's do that yeah times mass of ball 2 in the x dimension times mass which is 0 0.5 something okay so you solve for that and you know there are three knowns and only one unknown so you just find a velocity of ball 2 in the x dimension I get that to be simply well something the answer is not important you can solve for it uh, next is in the y direction okay so neither ball is moving in the y-axis so they both are zero right so zero equal to because mass times velocity and the velocity is zero in the y dimension and then you go on to this side and you know the y component of ball a sine 30 times 1.10 and you know the mass of ball a all the only thing we don't know is really the final velocity of ball 2 in the y dimension and then again that's easy you solve for it and final velocity of ball 2 in the y dimension just one unknown and you'll end up with something something simple math okay so we know the x and y of the so the original question was uh, taking the x-axis to be the original direction of the ball which is what I did I assumed 1.80 meters per second is in the x direction they wanted to write down the equations expressing the conservation of momentum now I didn't start neatly with the conservation of momentum that looks like sum of all in the x direction initially is equal to sum of all linear momentums final in the x direction similarly sum of all linear momentum initial in the y direction is equal sum of all linear momentum in the final in the y direction so yeah now that's very clean and you can solve for the math now they just want us to find the magnitude and the angle of the ball so that's just basic uh, vector diagrams so let's say let's see okay this is 0.678 you solve for it yourself and you'll find the numbers too and this was negative 
0 0.40 which means it's going down <coughs> um, if because y negative is down because I over here calculated that for ball A the component was up and since that was positive then a negative answer here a negative something has to result in the opposite direction math is helpful it turns it gives you hints about what the physics is trying to tell you anyway so this is what we have to solve and you solve for the magnitude by you know one side square plus the other side squared and if you remember Toa, Soka Toa from above this mnemonic you can just do um, tangent is of something is equal to opposite over adjacent well this is the opposite this is the adjacent so minus 0 0.440 you don't have to respect the sign here it doesn't matter grand scheme of things even if you respect it it works out if you really think about it I'm not gonna get into that and then that is the inverse of that which will be something I don't know uh, 33 degrees maybe and this squaring and square rooting comes out to something like 0 0.809 so you can say hey it's 0 0.809 meters per second at 33 degrees below uh, this is the positive axis so below positive x axis and you're done and hopefully now you can solve any problem that's similar or not even similar anything that has vector diagrams and linear linear momentum thanks for watching